the perfect mug to start the weekend. Let's do it. everyone welcome to so lovely with grace if you're new here I'm grace if you're returning welcome back I love to sew that goes without saying what a great start to the weekend with a great cup of coffee and a great mug a beautiful mug that my friend Diane gifted me thank you Diane okay everyone I got a lot for you today, a lot of exciting things today. So if you want to hit pause, grab a cup of coffee, your favorite drink or snack and come back, that would be great. So let me tell you what you're going to see today in this video. Wow, the first thing is a simple summer tea. Yes, a simple summer tea that I fell in love with. And I'm wearing one of them now. When I say one, I made not one, not two, but three teas that you're going to see me model today. Then after I talk about that new look pattern, because that's what it is, new look, I am going to talk about embroidery. What did I make on my new embroidery machine? Well, if you're interested, stay tuned to find out because it's really, really exciting. And I think you'll like it. And then finally, I have something sweet for you to see at the end of the video. So let's get started. So this week, I brought my serger in to get serviced. Let me tell you what happened. My serger, of course, I service my machines because you want to keep them maintained. They're high quality. They're, you know, high end machines. And it just so happened it was a coincidence. I needed to bring it in anyways. But the funny thing is that I couldn't thread it. With the enlightened serger, you have this push thing and it threads the needles. Now the left needle I could thread, but the right needle was not threading. And I would hand thread it, and then I would sew, and then the, the, the thread would come out. Well, come to find out, I've owned this thing for 12 years, okay? Never has this happened, but I put in the needle backwards. So I just want to tell you, sometimes you could be sewing for decades and do something silly like that and kind of damage your machine. But fortunately, it wasn't damaged. So that's how my week started. Um, actually, it was last week I brought it in. I got it back. It's home, and it's covered, and it's clean, and I used it. So I'm so happy. And then what else did I do this week? Besides the three T's, I made my first embroidery project on my new Meridian 2 machine. And it's amazing. This machine is just a dream come true. And I hope you like what I made. But first, let me talk about the new look pattern of the Simple Summer Tea that I'm in love with. It's new look 6217. View B is the tea. It's the orange one and the yellow top here. They're the same view. I've had this pattern. Now, not this one. This is the 99 cent one that I got at Hobby Lobby. This is the second one I got. But the first one I got sat in my collection since December 22. That's when I got it, when I did my first video on this channel. I did a new look pattern haul to kick off my channel, and this pattern was included, but I never sewed it up till now. And what a treasure this pattern is. This is a must-have, no doubt, must-have pattern. Um, so what I'm going to do, I had made three of these tees with slight differences. Uh, one, the one I'm wearing with no changes to the pattern. Then the second one, or they're not in any order, but one of them I made with a tie. And then another one I made with bias tape from the same fabric. So I'm going to show you all three, and then we'll come back here and I'll talk about the pattern. 
this is a very simple tea that you're gonna love in your wardrobe and you're gonna make over and over again I made three in two days just because it's simple to put together you could put it on it's a pullover through your head even though there's a button in the back you don't need to unbutton it, it has a back seam here the front is finished with bias binding here bias tape here and this is narrow hem simple narrow hem very quick and I hem these by just surging it all the way around and then folding it over and top stitching it has this little tiny curve here on the hip I paired it with these jeggings that I got at Walmart these Capri jeggings they're really really comfortable and the shoes are from Walmart also it's just a simple simple outfit still dressy but casual and very very comfortable and this fabric is from Joann's I got it last summer it's a chiffon it's not see-through uh, even though you would think it would be it's not I love it I love how it feels it's just perfect for summer and uh, so this is one top that I made and I made three. This is the same top, but I added a tie. I want to give a shout out to Carol from So Carol because I got the idea from her on one of her videos. She showed a Berta pattern that had this design on, the, on a similar tee. So I decided to add it to this tee. So all I did was I created the tie and I just sewed it in the ditch down the center seam right here and tied it to give it more of a slumbing effect and just a different design it's still the same thing we have the bias tape here for the neckline um, and of course the narrow hem here and I finished it off the exact same way as I always do with the serger and top stitch it has a little curve here and uh, it's just really cute um, like I said, this is like a crepe de chine. I got it Joann's. It's a, uh, oh wait, actually I got this at Hobby Lobby. Now that I recall, I got it Hobby Lobby. I still got two yards left. I think it was four something a yard. Uh, so let me give you a walk with this. I'm wearing these jeans, these jeggings. style it with anything white pants jeans and uh, I just like this casual look with my sneakies just comfortable and just throw it on no fuss no muss I absolutely love it now the only negative about this tie since it is attached you have to use it you can't just you know take it off because it hangs and it's kind of ridiculous but I will be wearing it with the tie that's why I added the tie so let me show you just pick it up and tie it what I did was I did two 35 by 7 inch strips I caught and then I joined the two 35 inch strips then I folded it right sides together prep and just sewed it and left an opening and turned it and then I just you know stitched in the ditch right here in the middle still has the button closure that was from here uh -huh. and you have a different look and I like it I like it with the tie I think it's just something unique and I will wear it another winner I love this top the only difference on this top is the neckline. I made bias tape from the same fabric. So I finished it off with the bias tape that I made. I'm going to insert a clip after I model this for you and show you uh, how I did that. But that's the only change. It's still the same design. Two pattern pieces with the front and the back. It has the back seam, again, right here. And, of course, the... Uh, button opening closure there but you can just slip this top on and off with the button 
You don't have to unbutton it. It's very easy. I like this crepe de chine fabric. I got this at Joann's. I previously made a top with this exact fabric and I have a video on it. It's a new look pattern. I'll insert it here. And uh, it, I had to use a fabric. I had one yard left and I said, hey, I'm going to make that simple tee with it. And that's what I did. So, and I also have my white jeggings. This time I got these at Walmart and my green sneakies here that I got at Walmart. Time and True brand. The sneakies were only $9.98 and these were $14.98. Couldn't resist. And, uh, like I said, this tee is a must have. I'm going to be buying more. You have one yard of fabric, this is your pattern. One yard of fabric, you're good to go. And it's very quick. And you can style it in many different ways. So New Look 6217 is a great pattern. Here are the line drawings. This is the T. Here's the back. Very nice, very simple lines. And now I'm going to include a little clip of the bias tape that I made with the green top, the crepe de chine. The pattern calls for half inch wide single fold bias tape. And I don't have one that matches, so I have a lot of this fabric left still. I can make it. I can make it myself. I'll uh, just cut this fabric on the bias at a 45 degree angle, one inch wide, and then use my handy dandy bias tape maker set I got from Adam So. And the yellow one is for a half inch single fold bias tape. Use my iron. So I'll just cut the strips, join them together, iron them, and I'll have my bias tape. And it'll look even better. I cut two strips on the bias because it's just for the neckline. I don't want a lot of bias tape. I'm not going to use this fabric again. And then if you can see the line here, the thread is kind of light. I just sewed right here. And when I turn it this way, you'll have the bias strip. So I'm going to trim these and bring it to the iron to make the half inch single fold bias tape. I have my brand new Hamilton Beach Durathon iron here. With lots of steam. Very nice. And I have the awl to pull the fabric through. I have my bias tape maker and the strip that is wrong side up. And I'm feeding it through this bias tape maker and I'm using my awl to feed it through. And I am going to pin it at the end here so that as I feed it through it doesn't move. So I'm going to pin this right here to hold it. That'll work out better. I'm also going to use this Best Press Spray because this fabric doesn't really press well. Actually, I should put on spray. That was on stream. Turn it here. It's a little... Is that stream now? Yeah. And see how that works because I don't have a lot of luck with this crepe fabric for pressing. And I'm going to press right at the top here. Look at that steam. Keep pressing and just pulling this tape maker. Just keep going. It's coming along beautifully. Got a little bit more here to go. So let me get the iron. Oh, that steam. This thing. This thing's a monster. I love how much steam it gives off. camera you can see Whoop. move the strip I'm gonna move the strip here and pin it down so it doesn't move and keep pressing Just press and move Looking beautiful. So let me finish off camera. Look at that. How nice is that? Perfect. So I'm going to use this for the neckline. 
I previously made New Look 6656, the one that the model's wearing, but I made it with the open back with the same green crepe fabric. So I wanted to show you that here. I have a previous video on this top. It has this open back with the button closure, and then we have this invisible zipper, and it's pretty similar, but it's just a great fabric. And after I made this, I had enough fabric to make the T and the bias tape. So I just wanted to show you how much I really like this fabric. I don't know if they still have it at Joann's, but if they do, it's great to work with. Now, let's talk about embroidery. Well, if you watch my video on National Sewing Machine Day, I did an unboxing of my new Meridian 2 Baby Lock Embroidery Machine and a box of bundle. And the bundle contained embroidery thread, sewing thread, stabilizer, two months of free Baby Lock online classes, and it was supposed to have needles. And it wasn't there. It was on back order. But I got it this week. Let me show you. Look at this tin! These Class A needles I got as part of the bundle with my embroidery machine. Now these are a variety of needles. Check this out. There's 50 needles in here of a whole variety. As you can see, there's uh, twin needles, embroidery twin needles, leather needles. What else is there? Metallic, uh, stretch needle, ballpoint needles, jeans needles, uh, sharp, quilting, embroidery, and universal needles. All of these packages of needles. This is going to last a long time. It's such a great little package. It's amazing. And now I'm going to show you what I chose to be my first project on my new embroidery machine. It's a pickle pie design. It's called Brilliant Blooms Embroidered Quilt Event. I made a table runner. You can make the blocks as small or as big as you want. You can make the table runner as long or as short as you want. Let me show you my final result. This is what I made. This is the quilt blocks that I made on the embroidery machine. Each one of these blocks, the sashing, these diamond blocks, were made 100% on the embroidery machine. Then I sewed them together on my Aria sewing machine. This is the back. It has the stipple in the back. And this is it. And I did the binding. I sewed it on with the sewing machine. But each block is 100% sewn on the embroidery machine. So I'm so excited because I'm not really a quilter, but now with the embroidery machine, I love to quilt. And this is essentially could be a quilt. It just so happens I chose it to be a table runner because it's a quicker project and I wanted to have something for you for this week and I just love it and I can use it. And look at these designs. I got all the fabric at Walmart. So now let me show you um, some clips on my embroidery machine, how I started the project. I'm going to show you some stitching on my machine, not full clips because this video would be way too long, but I'm going to show you uh, just a conglomerate of it right now. For my first project on my new embroidery machine, I decided to go with a pickle pie design. I love her designs. I use them all the time. This one's called Brilliant Blooms Embroidered Quilt Event. So it's a table runner and placemats with these flowers. I think they're beautiful. And I went to Walmart and got all my fabric there because they're close and I didn't want to drive to Joann's or I didn't know where else to go. So I got white. So there's six colors. So I got white, pink, coral, yellow, green, and this turquoise for the background. And I also am going to change my blade on my rotary cutter. So I got a new blade here because I'm going to be doing a lot of cutting, a lot of squares. That's why I don't do a lot of quilting or I'm new to quilting because I don't, I don't know, I'm not into cutting, but we'll see how it goes. But I do have these wonderful 
rotary cutter gloves for protection. Um, these are great to wear when you're cutting to protect your hands. I don't usually use them for garment cutting but because it's minimal but for this it's going to be a lot and I just want to wear these for safety and comfort and now I have my stabilizer here let me show you that I got this kit with my machine it has everything I need I need a cutaway mesh so I decided to go with this one if I can pull it out yeah no show mesh this one here I'm going to use this one and hoop the project with this. Okay, so I gotta get all this fabric here, press it and cut it out in many, many squares to fit my machine. Also, I have batting. I didn't pull it out yet, but it calls for batting. I'm going to hoop my stabilizer and it's too small for the hoop. This baby lock stabilizer is 12 by 10, so I can't use it for this big ginormous hoop. <laughs> so I'm going to use this OESD stabilizer, which is 15 inches by 10 yards. So I can use this one, no problem. I'll save the baby lock no show mesh for my other hoops. But it's great to have a big hoop now. I hoop the stabilizer. I have my cuts here of all the pieces and all labeled. So I'm just going to go step by step with the instructions and make the block. The diamond in white and now I have the green here and this is the leaf. So what I need to do now since I stitched the applique here I need to trim around it. First it's stitching a zigzag stitch and then a satin stitch around the loop. Just an excerpt of my embroidery stitching here. Very, very fast and it's coming out great. The flowers are stitched out. Now we're stitching out the stamens in the middle. That's what we need. flower. Now I'm stitching down the four sides, the four corners. I'm going to turn it open and then I'm going to sew the stipple design on each corner. So this gets turned. Oops. <laughs> I have three sides stitched down. Well, it's working on the third one, then the fourth, and after that is a stipple. Pretty neat. Now I marked a half inch around the block. See that green ink? And I have to trim the block here and leave a half inch around it. So I trimmed the block and left a half inch around. Now I need to turn it and put the back on, the fabric on the back. And I'm going to use this basting adhesive. Then I'm going to put it back on the hoop and then it's going to stitch uh, the back onto this block. So now I'm stitching out the stipple quilting design here and then a few more steps and I'm done with this block. I'm doing the sash now. Look at this beautiful display. I'm at this point doing the pink flowers at the moment. I just completed all the blocks, the sashing blocks, and then the main blocks. They're not sewn together. They're just laid out here. This is how I'm going to lay them out. 
all these blocks were made on the embroidery machine 100% and now I'm going to sew them together and I'm going to use the sewing machine for that with these pieces, these sashing pieces go in between and I'm going to sew them all together and then do the binding and I'll be done. So I hope you enjoyed that watching the stitch outs on my embroidery machine. It's just amazing what it can do. I want to show you close up. This applique here, isn't that beautiful? The flowers, the stems, and the stipple. These blocks, I can't believe, are 100% done on the embroidery machine. And it's just wonderful that you could do a quilt on it. So that's what I chose as my first project. Now, some other news about embroidery. I don't know if you've heard of OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. They're an embroidery outfit that has and carries all things embroidery, designs, stabilizers, scissors, tape, spray, adhesive, any, anything embroidery. And I've been buying embroidery things with them for years. And they're having an event across the country. It's a two-day event. So look locally in your city and see if there's somewhere nearby that you could attend. But I'm so excited because I'm going to be attending in Tampa, which is a couple hours away, but I will be staying overnight. A two-day embroidery exciting event. Let me show it to you online. Just go to the OESD.com page and scroll down to the bottom till you get to resources. There it is, resources, and then you'll find events. So you want to click on events, and that should bring up the list of their events. You could search here for your town or zip code, I suppose. But this lists all the events that they're doing across the country. And um, I'm going to be going to this one. This is the event. It's called Let's Celebrate. Let's celebrate with OESD Embroidery Machine event, Tampa, Florida. It's sold out. I'm excited. And look at these. This is what we're going to make. Wow, it looks like a flag of some sort. Well, the list is here, actually. Welcome garden flag, party treat bag, centerpiece wrap, straw cupcake topper, and gift card holder. Hmm about this event is a two-day in-person event you get breakfast lunch snacks beverages contests with prizes latest technology and sewing and embroidery machines use of supplies and tools and exclusive project kits what you need to bring yourself a smile a good attitude and your willingness to learn we provide the rest so yeah, that's it. You just show up. The machines are there. Top of the line machines you get to be exposed to and learn on. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm so excited. Check it out. That's it for this week. That was a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stick around to the end because I have something sweet for you to see what I did with those apples. So I hope you found this video informative and fun. And most of all, I hope you were so inspired. Or apples this morning, so I think I have enough for a whole pie. I'm going to use this Pillsbury Perfect Apple Pie recipe. I use it all the time. And these Pillsbury Pie Crusts. So I have my flour and sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, lemon juice, my pie crust, and my apples. Now I need to cut them up and then mix it all together in the bowl. I mixed up all the ingredients, and now I'm going to put it in the pie shell. It's looking good. She's ready for the oven. So I got to put it at 425 for 45 minutes. I wish you could smell it, but can you hear it sizzling? A couple more minutes. Bubbling there. See the bubbles? Oh, look at this pie. All right. I'll take it out. Doesn't that look delicious? It's still bubbling right out of the oven. I wish you could smell it. I got these mini pie tins on Amazon, so I decided to make mini apple pies. And I'm 
making the Pillsbury apple pie, the perfect apple pie recipe here. And now I'm just going to cover them up with the pie crust. I got the pie crust at Aldi, so they're ready for the oven. Almost ready. Look at that crust. See the bubbling there? It's bubbling. to come out and cool down. They came out perfect.